What's up greedy monkeys? Happy Wednesday and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we're checking out some Jund Shovel Rock that user X-File took to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Pioneer League. Now, a former co-worker of mine, Krim, played this on YouTube as well on the MTG Goldfish channel. If you want to go and check that out, you can check out some more gameplay with this deck. Uh, so, Shovel is a very good boy. He does a lot of good mid-range things that are great. He can stop any grounded creature deck in their path. He's a 1-3, so he just walls any cheap creature deck and just stonewalls any fatties from attacking. And if you get to kill a creature with Shovel on the battlefield, you get to gain life and draw cards. So very good at stabilizing, very good mid-range piece. And I've actually seen a few different Chevrolet Rock builds in each color combination of Golgari. So I've seen it in Soltai, I've seen it in Abzan, and I've seen it in Jund. So Soltai, uh, usually what they run is Jace, Vern's Prodigy, and Drown in the Lock. And what Abzan gives you is the Mythos, the Abzan Mythos. And then Jund gives you Kroxa, Dreadbore, Kologon's Command. So I personally felt like Jund was the best of the three um, because it is a Luris deck, I believe. And Luris, getting back Kroxa, is pretty great synergy you can just start draining and gaining or not draining and gaining but making them lose life and discard cards and then eventually you'll get to the point where you can just get Kroxa into play so i felt like it was an overall stronger late game core um so yeah it's basically going to be like the pioneer version of modern gen so let's get to it so if you want to play today's deck along with us, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online. And if you wanted to purchase today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of my patrons scrolling down below. It is because of you guys that this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, so we're live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders. And today we're playing some Jun Shovel Rock. So Shovel, um, it's a very annoying dude for creature decks because it's a 1-3 death toucher for two, which is already annoying. And then you can start putting uh, bounty counters in your opponent's stuff at your upkeep. And if you kill them, you get to gain three life and draw a card. That's nuts. So we really want to go up against mono creature decks today so that we can just bounty them up, kill them, draw cards, gain life, and just continue to disrupt their entire strategy. Now, this is also a graveyard-based deck. So we got Seder Wayfinder to self-mill. And uh, then we are going to end up milling over Kroxas to get back. It's a really good late-game grind piece. And then we even have Delirium Synergies with Grim Flare to also self-mill ourselves and mill over Kroxas to get back. So because it has Delirium, uh, we got Soul Guide Lantern, which is mainboard graveyard hate, which might be very underrated, so that should be good. We got Deadweight, which can kill a creature that's small, but it's also an enchantment, so that also counts towards Delirium. Thoughtseize to get a sorcery in the grave and also deal with the opponent's shenanigans. Push for removal, Dreadbore for removal, Assassin's Trophy for removal, Abrupt Decay for removal, Kologon's Command for removal, and Hero's Downfall for removal. And Kologon's Command can also blow up an artifact as well, make him discard a card, kill a small creature, return a creature from our graveyard to our hand. Like if we mill over a shovel or a Grim Flare we want, we can get it right back. Scooze also deals with the opponent's graveyard and also gets fat. Because, you know, with all the removal and thought seizes, we're going to be able to fill our opponent's graveyard pretty well. So Scooze has a lot to eat up. Uh, we have 23 total lands. Sideboard, we got another copy of Deadweight for those cheap matchups. Duress is our combo and control hate. Barrier Breach is a way to blow up a bunch of enchantments like we're going up against Black White Sram or a Fires of Invention deck. Luris is a companion to get back stuff that dies. And especially with our self-mill like Seder Wayfinder and Grim Flare, we're going to be milling ourselves a bunch so we'll get a lot of stuff to get back with Luris. And Recurring Croaks every turn with Luris is pretty funny. Uh, Slaughter Games is anti-combo. Name a combo piece can't be countered. Rip it out of their deck. Damning Sphere is good against the Lotus Breach decks. And then Scrap Peep Scrounger is a good recurrable threat for control matchups. And that is basically it. And with that, we're ready to go on to the gameplay. Got a game here against Contagion 13. And we won the Dire Roll. Going to be on the play with some Jun Shovel Rock. And this looks great. Let's keep it. Going to start on Unbridled Growth and just crack it to draw a card. And that's a good thing to get back with um, Loris. Oops, I played the wrong land. But it's okay.
do too unnecessary damage, but I got a lot of removal, so we should be good. And I'm also on the play, so I'm the aggressor here. I could sack the Unbridled Growth right now, but I can't think of anything else I'd rather slam on turn two other than a Grim Flare, so I don't need to crack it yet. Ooh, there's a Shovel. But I'm definitely going to get the Grim Flare online. Green Black. Hey, Excalibro. Let me give you a hug. The opponent's going to opt, sure. How's it going? Let me refresh my page. I'm like... I'm also just going to crack this like an F6. So. Particle. Oh, is it the Phoenix deck? Burning Anger. Oh, it's the Storm Herald deck. Okay, we got to be wary of that. Um, I'm going to get out another Grim Flare. I want to get these online. So I'm trying to mill over a Scooze here with Grimflare or find a Scooze to get so I can eat their, their stuff, their combo pieces out of their grave. Scooze is going to be good here. Um, let's put these all into our graveyard. Maybe I want to keep the mountain. No, I don't want to keep the mountain. And we have Delirium. Yes, that's great. We milled over Sorcery Land Artifact and we got Enchantment in the grave already. So now we have Delirium online. So the opponent's going to have to get something together quick. Cool. Let's go to combat. Swing with bull for eight. And they both connect. Um, mill them all. Come on, give me that scooze. Oh, I like Thoughtseize. But I kind of have the creeping feeling that they're going to have double, um, double Storm Herald. I'm just going to mill them all. And uh, I think what I'm going to do here is, in response to anything, when they go tap out for Izzet Charm here, I'll Colgon's Command and make them ditch a card and take two damage. So I'll have Lethal on board here. Um, so target player discards a card. Two damage to any target. Red, black, whatever. Because now it puts them in range of double Grim Flare, so I'm forcing them to have to deal with these. Gonna throw you on the PC real quick? Alright, sure thing. Mmm, good toast. Yeah, I love the Nacho Libre references. I've watched, so, like, it's it's not that I've watched Nacho Libre so many times, it's just that I, I've watched Jack Black movies so many times. Because there was a point where Jack Black was my favorite actor. He probably still is my favorite actor. Even though he doesn't really do movies anymore. And I don't really watch movies anymore, but... I've watched Tenacious D time and time and time again. I've watched School of Rock time and time again. I've watched Nacho Libre time and time again. It's just I like Jack Black. Oh, that improbable line saves them, but not for long, because I got a fatal push. Your name on it. And that's lethal. So improbable alliance deck, it is a burning anger, uh, colossal, it's a colossification deck. See, they didn't discard colossification thinking that they were dead. Um, but yeah, bring in slaughter games for sure. Uh, bring in duress. Now, Slaughter Games is a little awkward on the, um, on the draw, I'll admit, because it's going to be a little slow, but I think it still has that potential, because if I can slow them down with Thoughtseize and Duress, then I can, um, you know, try to get that online before they get it. Can it also exile it from their graveyard? Use a Nolan card, graveyard in hand, exile them all. Okay, that's good. Uh... I can probably cut Hero's Downfall, and let's cut Dreadbore. Let's cut Abrupt Decays. 
You know what? Abrupt decay is an instant speed way to deal with their thing with the colossification on it if I find it. Um, Soul Guide Lantern's good. Let's cut one Unbridled Growth. Push. I would need Revolt to hit their stuff. Let's let's cut. Let's cut dead weights and pushes actually, because they don't really do anything here. So I guess I have slots to bring in like Scrap Heap Scrounger, and um, I can bring this Unbridled Growth back in. Pushes and dead weights aren't gonna do much right right here. Jack Black is funny. Yeah, totally. Um, I I don't really know a lot about UK movies, but I know there's those two guys that are awesome from uh from Hot Fuzz. Those two guys, like the the skinny the skinny dude and the chubby dude, they're always together in movies. They're like best friends or something, and they're a really good comedy duo. Really good. I don't know their names, but he was in Shaun of the Dead. I'm sure Twelfth knows. That looks good. Let's keep that. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's their names, but I'll trust you. Um, did I go for duress right now? I think I'm going to go for duress right now. I don't want them to get like their looting spell off if they only got one. Thirst for meaning. Opt and opt. Okay, let's take thirst for meaning. It's a good card. So they just got double opt and lands. Good British comedians right there. Totally. Really good. They're very entertaining. Um, I think I'll go with Kroxa here. Because I want to start recurring Kroxa with Luris. Let's go. Black, red. I just saw, you saw that message pop up on my screen right there? Um, that was one of my comments I left on a video. It was the Last of Us 2 trailer, and it had like 60,000 likes and like 50,000 dislikes. And I'm like, how? What? It's Last of Us 2. It looks amazing. And the story of Last of Us is great. And it's the one of the most, probably the most heartfelt, just like break your heart, you cry games ever. And it's like super hype and it was like amazing and the, the trailer was great. How did it have 50,000 dislikes and 60,000 likes? I don't understand. Like usually sometimes when a video has a million dislikes, you can understand why. But this one, I genuinely had no idea why it had that many. All right, let's play Luris so I can start getting this Roxo loop online potentially. Is it charm? They're gonna go looting. But good thing I have uh, the scoos to start eating their graveyard. They ditched Burning Anger and Colossification. So if they don't have exactly um, Storm Herald right now, then we just eat them with scoos. Alright, they got the nuts. Like, we, we duressed their hand and they didn't have any of those at all. And they just, one is a charm, got all three. Alright, so that was pretty lucky. But now going on to game number three, um, we get the initiative, we get to be on the play. So I feel like this can go a lot smoother. Okay, we are back. Uh, my internet died again. We are going to keep this hand. We got a couple cantrips, and I think that's fine enough. But being on the play, I don't know, actually. Maybe we should mulligan. But no, like, double cantrip kind of really prompts me to keep this. I, I don't think it's good, but it's not bad. I said, starting on Brattle Growth. And I guess I'll continue the conversation that I was currently talking about. Uh, did you hear... Wait. Did you hear how Naughty Dog is handling it are the reasons for the dislikes? How are they handling it? What's so... Like, it looks like, like an amazing game. What's, what's all the hate about? What's the, what's the big controversy about Last of Us 2?
Because, like, I, I played Last of Us 1, and it was amazing. So many feels. You really get attached to the characters, even though there's only, like, two characters, and then and the DLC brings in a third one. But you really get attached to them, and then... Yeah. It was an amazing game. Soul Guide Lantern starts exiling her stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go with Luris here, and the next turn I'll just play and crack on Bridal Growth and get it immediately right back before they have the chance to exile it. But they'll have a chance to exile it with Unbridled Growth's ability on the stack. And I have a good feeling they're going to uh, anger the dogs right now. That probably wasn't the wisest choice. All right, they cracked the Soul Guide Lantern just to cantrip. And let's go Unbridled Growth and crack it. Abrupt Decay. All right, let's go Unbridled Growth again and crack it. Shovel. All right, let's shock here, even though I could have just went Fable Passage. Let's go with Seder Wayfinder to try to mill over a Kroxa. I didn't mill over a Kroxa, but I'll take this Fable Passage. Get in there for a bit. You won't spoil the plot of The Last of Us 2. You can just look up online. The plot sounds so bad it hurts. Well, of course, I have a feeling that, that, well, of course Joel's gonna die. I can take an educated guess and guess that Joel's gonna die. That's, pr that's a pretty easy guess. So that's gonna be heartbreaking. Um, th that's the only really person who's close to Ellie because Ellie, like, just went on this journey alone with Joel. Like, there, she had no parents, like, no family. So uh, Joel's the only one close to her. So that would be my guess. All right, the opponent's taking it. So what I'm actually going to do, you know, what I shock, I just want to like, if they kill one of my creatures, I'll still have another one to get lethal. I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to commit any more to the board because if they anger, I'll regret it. Um, but I want to, I want to hold up Abrupt Decay to kill a Storm Herald before it gets a chance to do its thing. Yep, they ditch Colossification, all they need is to ditch Burning Anger and play Storm Herald. Um, but since I'm so broke, I probably won't buy, um, I probably won't purchase Last of Us 2, but I will look up the long play on YouTube and just watch it all being played, you know, like without commentary, so it feels like as though I'm playing it. All right, with that trigger on the stack, let us abrupt decay, and then we win because they're tapped out. All right, well, that was a close one. They had a lag out mid game, but thankfully the opponent sticked around or stuck around. And we got there, sweet. Taking down the Colossification Storm Herald deck. We played against that deck the other day, and it was the uh, Royal Scions, like impo improbable. What is that called? The Bitter Blossom in green and green and blue red. And it looks like they had that again, the Improbable Alliance, but we didn't see Royal Scions. But I assume it was like the same list. I assume. That's a cool deck. It's cool if that's going around now. Got a game here against Johnny Trabs. We won the die roll. We're going to be in the play with some Jund Luris. Uh, Shovel Rock. And that's going to be a mulligan. This one is better. Let's keep that. And I think I want to throw away one of my Unbridled Growths. Um, Alright, let's Unbridle Growth up. Pass turn. Come on, please be on a, please be on a deck where Shovel's good. Play a creature. Play a one drop, come on. I want to do something with Shovel. Come on, play Soulscar Mage. Oh, this is going to be a good Shovel match. All right, but they could have a Lightning Strike. 
but likely they're gonna have like a shock and a wild slash maybe stomp but i doubt they have bone crusher in their deck i think they're just goblins shock devil slamming it And now we're going to start gaining a bunch of life, drawing a bunch of cards. You know, in all honesty, it'd probably be correct for them to waste their Firebrand's ability and then also Shock and just two-for-one themselves to deal with Shovel, or else it's going to start getting too much value. And they could also sag this in response to me targeting it and killing it. So it doesn't really work too well against Fanatical Firebrand, but still going to work well. Legion Loyalist. And another Fanatical Firebrand. Alright, this looks good. Go ahead, attack all you want. They're actually going for it. Alright, free kill for me. Yeah, you go, girl. Block one of their Fanaticals. While I have the chance to, or you know what, no, it just makes more sense to put it on there. I was going to say, while I have the chance to do it on there, I should. Ooh, Fatal Push. Uh, but am I supposed to just get out Grim Flare here? Maybe I am. Ah, uh, Grim Flare is correct, but let's have our flood. I want to gain three life and draw a card. stay back and then I can just do it again with push and prompt them to concede and shovels an absolute house against aggro maybe like modern maybe modern uh, Jun should start sideboarding shovel for the creature matchups but then again Jun and in, in modern is already super set against creature decks got so much removal as it is it's good against burn at least, but it does it does die to the searing blaze. So I don't know about that. Um, even though they're a red deck with four cards in hand, I think I'm still gonna play Luris here. Or you know what? Nah, let's not. Let's just play Grim Flare. I'll play Luris next turn when I can for sure get back my unbridled growth. Hey, Moly Ace. How goes it today for a Monday? Today's a good day. It doesn't make any difference to me that today's a Monday. I, I built my own schedule because I, I work on the internet, so I'm my own boss and I get to choose what days I work. So Monday's just a Monday for me. And I work on stuff every single day, so there, there's not a single day where I have like a complete full day off. Every single day I, I gotta work on something. Because it's at that point where if I don't work on anything, I feel bad, you know? Like, I feel like I, I've not done enough for the day. That's pretty good and aggressive. Alright, I'm just gonna take it. We got two cards left. Ooh, another push. I can double push here. Um, I want to go with another Grim Flare and then just hold up a push. Get in there. You know, I I also think I'm going to. I want to get a land on top. Thoughtsy is going in the grave. Growth in the grave. Leave Blood Crypt on top. Crack and Bridal Growth. Draw that Blood Crypt. Play the Blood Crypt. Taps. And pass and leave a push. And then next turn we can go Luris, get back Shovel. Being your own boss is a great place to be. Yeah, I like it. Although... Um, I'm, I'm still in the early stages of it, so it's still, 
there's still risk involved in this job um but hopefully i can get it to a stable position where it's like yes this is for sure for sure set and set and safe and good And let's push there. They got dragon fodder. So do they also got the new one? The, the one that makes a human and a dinosaur? All right, let's go Luris. Red, black, black. And, oh wait, let's go to combat first. Let's go to combat first. I want to go to combat first because I currently have Delirium. And I won't have Delirium if I play that Shovel from the Grave. So let's just swing first. They are taking it. Graveyard, graveyard, graveyard. And graveyard, graveyard, and top that. Top it. Play shovel. And here go. I got a lifelinking blocker. I'm at nine, which is pretty healthy. I got two blockers. Got three cards and three mana. Do your worst. Legion Loyalist is a good start, and you got a Bushwhacker. That was a pretty good effort. I'll, I'll give you that. That was a pretty good effort, but I think we should be still good. It doesn't. It gives Trample and can't be blocked by also first strike, so I can't really block with Loris. Um, but I can go to one. I can like, oh, it gives Trample also. So maybe I do have to block with Loris. Okay, let me see. If I block with Luris on here, that's still lethal. I do have to block both or with both. If I block there, that is that is enough. So I do have to chump with Luris. Block like that. But at my upkeep, I get to do shovel shenanigans. And I get to gain three life. All right, put a counter on this gob. Go black and let's push that. Go back up to five and draw a card. Oh, I could have gotten lethal if I just played Kroxa there, but I think we still got it. Yeah, I could have got lethal just playing Kroxa. Ooh, I can play Kroxa anyways now. Black, black, red, red. Play Kroxa. Doesn't matter what I exile because this is lethal. I mean, they could have a uh, non-land card in their hand, and then, I mean, since they didn't play land, I mean, they could be sandbagging. Come on. Tell me you have a land. They're definitely sandbagging. Or what if they have like a Stoke the Flames? That'd be pretty cool. This seems like a deck that would play Stoke the Flames. If it's playing Dragon Fodder and it's Mono Red Goblins, obviously it's gonna Stoke the Flames. Goblin Gathering. All right, well, let's attack for, let's just attack for four here. I could bring them to one, but let's be safe. No reason to get all hasty.
Grave, grave, grave. Doesn't matter. Last turn. F6. What you got? Hey, Kyoji, how you doing? Welcome back. How's life? Is life back to normal? I put a bounty counter on this gob. Let's have our fun and push that gob. Gain three life, draw a card. Uh, go to combat, swing all. They lose three life. I got tramplers. Is this trample? It's not. These dudes trample. They're taking it. So, mono red goblins. I don't know if it's a obelisk of Erd deck. It could be. I don't think I'm going to prepare for it, even though I really can't. So, anti aggro. I think we're already set up for anti aggro, but although I could bring in another dead weight over like Hero's Downfall, which is a very clunky spell. Um, honestly, I don't really need um, Full Guide Lantern. And uh, Damping Sphere does kind of stop their Bushwhacker shenanigans, but only low key. Doesn't really do it good. So let's just bring in the dead weight over a Soul Guide Lantern. Oh man, it is hot. I can't wait for when I get to turn this fan back on high. Been good. Work will pick up soon. Jobs are up for bid. Might get a regular. Doubtful, but I'm at least trying. Yeah, uh, like I, I have a feeling that once quarantine ends, it's going to be harder than ever to get a job because everybody's going to be competing for them because so many people lost their jobs like from quarantine and so once jobs reopen everybody's gonna be like filling out applications everywhere like all restaurants are like shut down right now so once restaurants open up millions of jobs are gonna be available but then again people could just be on leave right now and once quarantine ends they can just come right back to work that's i i assume that's how a lot of places are right now all right, let's keep that. Got lots of removal seems good. Wait, why did I bring in? Why did I keep in Thoughtseize? I mean, it could save me. It could still save me damage, so I'm still gonna play it. Which I probably shouldn't have played it on turn one. I should probably just play the tap land so I can get out later wayfinder next turn play, painlessly. But I can still hold a push. This is fine. Cause they can have something that I can take with Thoughtseize that would deal way more than two damage. Well, they're stuck on one here. Um, I think I'm going to take Legion Loyalist, and then I'll just push something next turn. And then they're going to be, like, really slow. Okay, let's take Legion Loyalist. When this attacks deals one damage to the player, okay, that thing, yeah, we gotta deal with that. And another one drop red creature that attacks for two, that's cool. I wonder if they if that's he's playing standard. I'm not sure. I don't ever I don't ever watch standard, but Forge Bitter seems like a card that would see played mono red aggro in standard. Gonna watch some Naira drawing streams, sweet. I didn't know Naira streaming right now. I because when she's streaming it's usually like late at night. I never seen her, seen her stream around this time. Have fun. And tell her she's awesome because she is. Oh, Foundry Street dinner. All right, Blood Crib Tap, leave a push.
And it's it's not super disappointing that the opponent's mana screwed because mono red functions off one land a lot of the time. I keep one I keep one landers in mono red often. It's not really that huge of a downside missing it a couple turns. It still has plenty of things to do and plenty of damage to deal. Just main phase shock. Now that's ambitious. This Seder Wayfinder is going to be super annoying to this guy. I know if I was in, the, in their position and I, Seder Wayfinder came down, I'd be like, man, that thing's annoying right now. Oh, a shovel. I'll take a shovel. Let's play that instead. Um, let see, what kind of a land do I want to get here? I mean, I want the mana for Kroxa, so I think I'll get a Swamp. Although maybe I should have got a forest because then Scoos can gain life. Yeah, should have got a forest. But I know that next turn I'm just going to go Hero's Downfall and then Abrupt Decay and then just start killing their stuff. But if they have the option of Lightning Strike here, they should absolutely do it. Or if they have the op opportunity to like Shock plus use this, they absolutely should. They shock my face? Why? I don't understand. I really don't understand. Let's just do this main phase so I can try to find my land. Broxa. All right, continue to stay back. Uh, we got six more Capital Corridor trains getting added next Monday. Sounds like a lot of work to be had. Six more, six more trains is six more jobs. All right, let's put this on a Goblin token. All right, uh, Unbridled Growth here. Tap for a green and sack it. Black. Let's go Seder. I want to find my land drop. There we go. Keep staying back. And next turn, if I wanted, I can just go Abrupt Decay Assassin's Trophy, gain six life, draw two cards, kill two creatures. Totally broken. This is a really good sh uh, a really good showing of what shovel's supposed to do. And now they're now they're gonna they're gonna take the the dreadful two for one to kill shovel, which they should have done last turn. But does that effect still linger? No, I think it only it only happens when shovel's in play. Let's block the one without a bounty counter. Come on, give me an untapped land. Nope. Um. All right. Well, you know what? Let's actually just get out of Scoos and start using it. It's out of shock range, so might as well. Gains me life, gets fatter. What's the harm? I know their hand is dragon fodder. Plus, oh, I know they already use their dragon fodder. They got reckless bushwhacker and one unknown. Let me look over here. Dragon fodder. Yeah, they got Reckless Bushwhacker and one unknown. Shovel was very underwhelming. He did some serious work here. I mean, he does serious work against creature decks. Like, I'm pretty sure he would do some massive work against Monogreen Stompy because he's got Death Touch. Holds them back. And Monogreen Stompy doesn't have a lot of removal. Yeah, it's only when Shovel's in play. That's the thing about him. He has to be in play. But if you're going up against Mono Green or like a deck like this, it's just like he's a must answer card. And if you don't answer him, you're probably losing. This go crack my face.
All right, let's Seder again. Please give me a land. Basic Swamp. All right, play a Basic Swamp. Let's uh, eat a Foundry Street Denizen. Play Kroxa. You have to discard a card. It is going to be... Reckless Bushwhacker. All right, I'm going to start swinging. I think they over nerfed him when they made a set of ability counters is the new theme why they would have not made bounty counters have auto text you know um marth or mathis fiend seeker also makes bounty counters i don't know if they count as the same kind of counters as a as a shovel's bounty counters though i'm not quite sure how that works all right let's play Luris. And get back shovel. Green, black. Maybe to make him different than Marcel. Who's Marcel? Same counters it is? All right, that's cool. They probably have some connection in lore then, if, if it's like that. Oh, sweet. Eidolon. I would normally take two damage off of it, but now I'm going to net one positive. All right, kill Eidolon. Take two, but gain three. Gain life, draw a card. Play a swamp. This is weird, but I'm abrupt decaying a goblin so they can't double block Luris. Um, now let's play... Um, let's play Kroxa from the grave. Discard your last card, please. It is a fanatical firebrand. Go attacking for a lot. Mathis, that's the name, yeah. They are from different planes, but they're both bounty hunters. Oh, is there any other cards with bounty counters? Because those are the only two I've seen. If there, I might have seen more that I'm just forgetting. Remember back in alliances or whatever, where there was mercenaries and like the car, the mercenaries that go and search for goblins or this or that, like. You know, like there was Mog Catcher, there was the other catchers. Did uh, any mercenary cards have bounty counters? Because it seems like they would. And they scoop it up, taking down Mono Red. Nice. Got a game here against Ed Brizo. We are going to be on the draw with some uh, Join Shovel Rock. This looks keepable. I like it. Seder can fuel Kroxa and find us our land for Kroxa. And we got ways to remove cheap creatures. Oh no, don't thoughts use me. No. Knight. Okay. Definitely gonna slam this dead weight on it immediately. And dead white there. So this should be a really good matchup for Shovel and all of our all of our cheap removal that we got in the main deck. And finally we go up against Mono Black again. It's been so long since we went up against this deck. This is still, like, one of the best decks, but, like, it completely fell off. And people just stopped playing it. It's weird how there's decks that are, like, top of the meta, and then people suddenly stop playing them. And Luris isn't their companion, so we can kill all this stuff without shame. Haven't played Jund in such a long time. I can't remember a single color combination I haven't played in a long time. 
I guess I haven't played Naya in a while since we did that Naya Zoo deck like a couple months ago. Um, have I done Sultan well? I think I have. Mardu, honestly, I haven't played a, a Mardu deck in, in a bit. Alright, let's Dreadbore on the Soren. I don't have to crack this Fable Passage since they have um, a Urborg that's turning it into a Swamp, so I can just tap it for mana. And I want it to be a Swamp anyways. Oathsworn's not a terrible thing. Land. Oh, that's a land. All right, play Lurus. Get back dead weight. They're holding up a bunch of mana, probably to use Castle Lockwain. And besides uh, Soren and Gifted Aetherborn, I don't think they have any other ways to gain life to get back that Oathsworn Vampire. So we should be good. Playing Orzhov in Arena's War Quick, quick Draft. Again, what's a Quick Draft? I don't know what that is. But I hope you have fun. Orzov's fun. I like to draft either Orzov, Rakdos, Boros, or Mardu. I, I just like to draft any co combination of Mardu colors. My favorite, because aggro always does well in limited, if you are a experienced aggro player. Well, yeah, black white's always just so solid. Can't go wrong. Blooming Marsh. All right, crack Blooming Marsh. Go and get a forest. Play Scoos. And let's eat that Oath Sworn Vampire before they can get it back. Play a Blooming Marsh tapped, go. What do they do to kill my Lurus? Erebos' intervention? They could exile my graveyard too. Quick draft is a bot draft. Oh, that one. Yeah, I like those. I think those are fun because you don't have to wait for anyone. I like that. Matt. You don't get to draft as good of a deck, but still, it's there. The option. Man, Liliana? Why do you have big Liliana in here? And now they get to draw cards when I try to attack at it. All right, well, kill the zombie. They get to draw a card. Let's Seder Wayfinder. Grab a Blood Crypt. Play a Blood Crypt. Tapped. Croxa. Red Black. Discard your last card, please. The one that you just drew off Lily. And next turn, I'll just hard cast Kroxa, and hopefully that can get somewhere. But this Lily is very powerful. This Lily is like, for a mid range versus mid range, it's kind of unbeatable if you don't just have like a Murderous Rider for it. That thing is an absolute house. Draws you cards and makes good tokens and. Can make you sack two creatures. All right, well, first things first, get back Croxa. Red, red, black, and black. Exalted Blooming Marsh, Mountain, Fabled Passage, Dead Weight, and Luris. Should have exiled push, but it's okay. I still got four card types, even though I don't have creature in there. They had a thought seize. All right, let's go to combat. Swing at Lily.
Um, do I really want to trade off my scavenging ooze right now? Um, I mean, they only got two things to eat. I would kill both of their muta vaults. I would kill both of their muta vaults. Mm. I don't know if that's worth. They're going to draw two cards. They're going to draw two cards when I do that. I don't think it's worth. But then they can just minus that. Oh, no, it's fine. Hmm. Let's just unbridle growth and just leave up Scoos here, I think. But if they draw if they draw a fatal push, I'm screwed. I was gonna say play the Seder, so I'm protected from Lily's minus. But now if they draw a single removal spell, we are screwed. That Lily is just single card win the game. Seriously, that thing is nuts. And they did draw the push. Wow. I'm not going to eat their graveyard because I want to draw another push. Now they can just minus that Lily and make me sack the last of my creatures and we'll lose Delirium. Oh no, they're just making another zombie. Okay. That was some BS though. Here, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Kill that thing now. Kill it with fire. Get that get that corn out of my face. Wow. That thing got them way too much value. Here, I'll swing with Luris or Kroxa here. The next good thing they play, I will be able to destroy with abrupt decay I'm hoping they don't find a wrinkle wrinkle would be annoying they chump did I play Seder here I mean might as well get more stuff to fuel the croak so once they kill it I knew I was going to mill over a Grim Flare. I tasted it. I knew it was going to happen. Also, bot draft is great for players like me who are easing back into magic and don't know every card. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, the time to think and no pressure. You don't have to have the pressure of knowing that everyone else at the table is waiting for you. You can just take your time and read the cards. Shovel! Now I got my card advantage. Alright, get in there with Kroxa. Get in there, scariest card in magic history. I've always wanted to do a video on like the top 10 or like top 20 or whatever like scariest magic card arts. That's been on my things to do list for like probably a year and a half now. I have this old list on my phone of like scary art magic cards. I just want to do a video on them someday. Once I know how to be more enthusiastic. I've tried though. I've tried to make comedy videos in the past. Like remember that Sanctuary Cat video? Down to nine. Oh, that's dangerously low. Well, that's a nice thing to abrupt decay. Knight of the Ebon Legion. Uh, let's still put it on Aetherborn, because that thing's got lifelink. And an extra three damage to the face with that second Kroxa. Gain three life, draw a card.
Let's just swing all. Get in for every bit of damage we can. Go ahead and discard that last card for me, opponent. Please and thank you. Please be a land so that you take three damage. Nope, it's a Thoughtseize. Gonna suit up a Muta Vault and then declare blocks and then pump up the Knight, I assume. Yep, that's what they're doing. They can even do it again and block two things and then tap all the Muta Vaults. They would be able to. But they're not. Alright. Uh, yeah, nothing I'm gonna do in response to that. Play Kroxa, and that'll do it. Oh, they can draw a card here. So their last hope is drawing a non-land to discard. Oh, they drew a land. They drew a land. Yeah, they scooped it up. They saw they drew a land. All right, let's go to sideboard. And we want the other dead weight. And that's probably it. Just the dead weight. And we can cut one just random thing like Soul Guide Lantern, which doesn't. We don't really need that here. Is there anything else that I want? Probably not. There's slaughter games to try to take those dang Lilianas, but we'll have to just save a removal spell for Liliana. It's not logical to bring in a slaughter games for that. It's only logical to bring in slaughter games against combo. Because they probably only have like one single big Lily in there, maybe two. And they're at the six drop slot, so it's going to be difficult for them to get there. But that deck does run 24 lands in the castles, so they have a good chance of getting up to six on curve. Uh, hey handsome, is it is this Janker a decent deck? Are you talking about the opponent's deck or ours? Because ours is a, it's pretty decent. It's doing well so far, and uh, this is a list that somebody took to a five zero in a league. And uh, the Shovel Rock lists, I've seen them in all color combinations. I've seen it in Soltai, Jund, and Abzan. Um, what they get in blue is they get a Jace Vryn's Prodigy and like Drown in the Lock. And then what they get in um, in white is the Mythos, the Abzan Mythos, the three mana instant speed destroy target non-land permanent. Let's keep that. And then in Jund, you get Kroxa and Dreadbor and, and Kolagon's Command. So I felt like that it was a lot more worthwhile in Jund than the other colors. Although I was very close to playing the Abzan one because that Mythos is sweet. And I don't know why people don't really play it like Modern should uh, modern Abzan should make a comeback and play that mythos, but then again, it's already got Maelstrom Pulse, which is better. Murderous Rider, Graft Digger's Cage, and Fatal Push. Um, I think I'm gonna take the Murderous Rider. I can probably find a way later to blow up the. What? <laughs> Wait. Oh, they had they had zero. They had no lands. Okay, so the opponent mulligan down to yeah. I I would do the same thing. Mulliganing down to five and then getting thoughtsies just feels awful. Every time I mulligan down to five and get thoughtsies, it's just you're so far behind on card advantage that there's just no not even any point anymore. So that's that's unfortunate that we didn't get to play that game out. It happens. I've been in that position too. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's deck. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So just in case you missed the last gameplay video, I will explain this one more time. Um, so I'm changing the way that I'm streaming MTG gameplay. I used to stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at um, 4 p.m. Pacific time. And we would stream our games, or whatever deck we're streaming that day, we would uh, go at it for like 10 to 12 games and stream the deck for like three and a half to four hours. 
Um, and we would do that three times per week. But now I'm going to start streaming all of the gameplay for the week, all three decks, on Monday. And I'm going to stream each deck two hours each. I'm still going to get enough games to make a gameplay video out of each, but I'm just not going to get as much games as before. Therefore, our speed up sessions and videos that like this one are going to end up being shorter or just not be there. But for today's video, we have two sped up games. So this first one, we are going up against the exact deck that we are on. The only difference I saw in their list is that they had more basic forests than me. But it was pretty much the same exact deck. It was a mirror. And game number one of this round took forever. It was like a half hour game one. And we still had game two and three to go. Um, but game number one was really hilarious because look, their scoos is massive. They got the chance to eat everything in the grave before I did. So their scoos was like stonewalling me forever, right? So just just remember this. Remember this because it's gonna come in. Uh, it's gonna come into clutch. Wait, it's gonna. This is gonna turn back around in a second. So what happens is I had a shovel that was like uh, stopping their scoos from attacking me. They had the f the really fat, huge scoos. They're getting a ton of life, but I had the death touching shovel, so they couldn't really swing at me. And so now the scoos are starting to attack me. But thank goodness, finally, twenty six cards deep in the library, I finally find a push and kill their scoos. And now it is my, they kill everything except my scoos. Now it is my scoos that is getting big. So now I have the big scoos and wait for it, wait for it. They end up playing their own shovel and the tables have turned. So like for a majority of the game, they had the fat scoos, I had the shovel, and now I have the fat scoos, they have the shovel. And it was the exact, um, the, the exact board we had, they had. It's pretty hilarious how that happened. But then again, it is a mirror match. So it's, it's bound to have that possibility. Um, but anyways, at the very end of this game, number one, I actually made a huge misplay with my scoos. Um, but what happens is I attacked with it and traded it off right there for their shovel when I thought they were going to like trade off their scoos for it or whatever. And then since their shovel had death touch and killed my big scoos, now they have the big scoos yet again and the tables have turned again. So I kind of screwed up with my scoos at the very end there. If I just chilled out, we wouldn't have had to worry. Um, but I got a little hasty there because that game was like half an hour long. So now we're going on to the next game and I get to be on the play and being on the play and them, I think they mulliganed or something. I got to thought seize them. They got to thought seize me. Um, but I get Kroxa in the grave and my graveyard is pretty filled. So I'm able to get Kroxa back and, uh, Kroxa does a good job at slowing them down. Like they got that death touching shovel, but I'm able to kill it because I got a lot of removal and if my graveyard gets filled even more, like with that unbridled growth that I got in hand, I can start um, getting that back with uh, Luris. And I did thought seize their scoos, so they're not going to go eat in my graveyard for Luris. And uh, wait, one more difference that I did notice that they had is that Luris was not their companion. They didn't have a companion. I don't know why, but yeah, it was like the exact list, but with no companion. So now we're going on to game number three, and the opponent is very low on the clock. They really don't have enough time to beat us. And, but this game wasn't, I think this game wasn't down to, to time loss for our opponent, but we just ended up outvaluing them and they didn't get a scoos either that, or we thought sees their scoos or something like that. And, um, I get a Kroxa back and Kroxa is, just, Kroxa is just able to take over the game because it's an absolute powerhouse in this matchup. And so that brings us to our next speed up game in the video. Uh, we're going up against... Uh, the blue black Demir Inverter deck with Yorion. We actually played against Demir Inverter Yorion uh, a couple weeks ago on the channel and we ended up beating it. And here we are going up against it again. And our opponent's name is uh, J. Huey something. And I don't know if that is William Huey Jensen, but J. Huey does sound a little suspicious. If that's William Huey Jensen, let me know in the comments down below because uh, I don't know. Now, this first game, I, I think it was like the same as, as the last round where first game was like super grindy and super long and Yorion gets a ton of value and they're just like, I got this dead, dead weight in hand, no pun intended. And they got like all that removal and card draw. They got a million cards and I'm just trying to, I'm just hoping they don't draw an inverter at any point, but we are kind of like eating their graveyard with scoos and being really annoying. And so it gets to the point where they don't find another Jace or Inverter because I'm able to kill their Jace with a Dreadbore. And they just don't find another one. And we ended up getting there and going on to game number two. And by the way, in this round, this was like the first uh, round of the stream or something like that. I think it might have been the second, but I made like a billion misplays. So thank goodness that wasn't non-sped up. <laughs> also, it was a long game anyways. 
but I ended up destroying their hand with uh, double thought seize and duress. And then right after that happens, they top deck a Jace on an empty board and I'm also getting mana screwed. So that really sucks. This right here was the biggest mana screw of like my whole life. I, uh, we went about 30 cards deep in our library. I think it was like 28 cards deep or something like that and could not find a third land. It's insane. I, I don't know how that's even possible because we're a 23 land deck and, and there's no third land in the top half of the deck. That was just the most insane mana screw I've seen ever. Um, so now we're going on to game number three and game number three. I don't know what the opponent was doing here. They had a uh, trial of ambition, triple omen of the sea or oh, the Jace double omen of the sea, and then even something else. And for some reason, I don't know why they didn't do this, but they did not play Yorion. It would have been so good. Like the opponent was looking for stuff to do. Like just play Yorion. You know, Yorion's going to draw you a billion cards and make me sack a creature because they're going to flicker all those things, but they didn't do it. I don't, I don't know why. It, and then we ended up just valuing out and they couldn't deal with our stuff because I don't know, they're just refusing to play Yorion. Maybe they're afraid we're going to kill it or maybe they just forgot about it. Um, but either or, we take down Demir and Verda Yorion yet again and that's about it. Let's go on to the wrap up. So we ended up with the five. Oh, the deck was very, very salt. It was just an absolute grindy, just powerful mid-range rock deck. Rock decks are meant to be such solidly built, just strongholds of just constant answers and constant value. And this deck lived right up to that. The only problem I see really is going up against control and combo and stuff like that. Even though we did beat a combo deck, I see how it can be pretty, you know, like it could be pretty difficult for us in game one at least because, you know, we got things like Abrupt Decay and Dead Weight and Fatal Push and like Dreadbore and Heroes Downfall and stuff like this that's like dead against control. Um, and that's when you really have to rely on like your sideboard stuff like Duress and Slaughter Games against control and combo. Uh, but yeah, like we went up against a pretty good pretty decent matchup today we even got the mirror and came out on top which was pretty sweet um but yeah i feel like if i if i played like 20 more matches with this deck or at least five more and got up to 10 games i'm pretty sure it'd be like somewhere around at eight and two um but we got lucky and snagged the 5-0 it's pretty sweet i really have no complaints the deck worked as intended shout outs to x file and uh, like I said in the intro, if you want to go check out um, some more gameplay, uh, there is some gameplay of this deck over on the MTG Goldfish channel on YouTube. My ex-co-worker, Krim, uh, piloted this, and uh, I didn't see the video. I don't know how I did, but yeah, you should go and check that out if you like this deck. Anyways, uh, hit that like button down below if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Go check out the social media. Links are down below. Let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. If you want to pick up today's deck, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online and try it out for yourself. If you want to pick up today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. Special thanks to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.